You've been on the ARCs before you joined the military and after you joined the military, you've been on ARCs. So I'm sure at some point that they've worked out that, you know, you are associated with one of the ARCs and that it's very likely that the people that you are working with or collaborating with are also associated with the ARCs. So them using this technology on you, they're, they're trying to find out who, who are the crew of the ARCs. Yeah, exactly. Who are the crews of the ARCs and how can they get everybody together to go at once to these ARCs? What happens when everybody comes at once in the ARC, when everything is activated at once? Because there's certain spots when you go into the ARC that only I can activate. But there's certain stop, like spots in the ARC that I can't activate. There's other people that activate. It. So how can I put this? When people dream, sometimes when you dream, sometimes it's your past lives that you, you have. Is a, is a construct of what you lived before. It puts what you're living in the modern time with it. So sometimes you feel like it's weird. Oh, man, it's a weird dream. Well, it's probably a past life that you have lived. You're listening to Exopolitics Today with Dr. Michael Sala, your source for the uncensored truth regarding the human, extraterrestrial, global, and political agenda. Click the like button and subscribe to this channel. And now, here's Dr. Michael Sala. I'm very happy to have uh, JP back with us on Exopolitics Today. Welcome, JP. Hi, Dr. Sala. How are you doing? I'm good. Nice to be here in Exopolitics. This is going to be an awesome moment. <laughs> well, I know people are very excited uh, by your by your updates. People really are looking forward to learning more about what's really happening because there's so much silence out there, and uh, you know you're in a privileged position to be able to report on current events that mm -hmm. are happening involving. Uh, the military and space command so not many people are able to talk about that and and you are so i know people are very appreciative as am i that you're able to reveal details of these missions so why don't you tell us about this latest mission um you know maybe tell us uh you know w when did it happen and what happened this happened after we had that mission when we came back from the cavern with the eight people now I got the green light to tell you what happened. So that's why I'm sharing it with you. With the other things that happened when we came back with the device. We came back and they brought everybody to the base. The eight people, including the person that couldn't go inside, but, you know, he still came with us to the base. Um, when we got to the base, we, we stood in line. Always when we come back, we go through like a type of like a cleansing. Um, when we connect with other types of ETs, it's protocol, you know, um, to put our clothes away, you know, they, they clean them, they, we, we, they do blood draw. They just, they, they check everybody um, when we go do these certain kind of missions. But what I found quite interesting is that they took us to this big, big hangar type of room at the base I actually brought you to. And I saw more people there. I saw a total of probably 30. And you walk, you walk into, and, and, and there's boxes, right? There's rooms, but they're made like of a titanium type of metal. And there's boxes in there. And one of the commanding officers are like, hey, we want you in one of those rooms. We want to monitor you. And I'm like, wait, what kind of monitoring are you going to do? Just go to that room. So we each go into that room. And there's other like 30 people, like more people going to these rooms and it's connected to like a server, each room. So when you enter into this room, it's like a white box, right? And there's a seat in the middle. The seat, when you sit in the middle of the seat, you know, you relax, you lean back. It's like a recliner kind of seat, but it has a shape of a head with, um, it's like a metal plate that goes behind your, your head. And they and then contracts into your head, you just lay back. And you have somebody dressed in white, like a type of scientist. Um, they're dressed like scientists, <laughs> dressed in white, their face are covered, they got gloves, they connect you, right? And when they connect you, they connect you like they put wires on like wire patches on your head. 
So they, they sit you in this box and they, some guy with white clothes, looking like a scientist, covering their face with a mask. They got um, some goggles, they got gloves, and they sit you and they connect you to these cables. But this cable is connected to a hub. Um, all these boxes are connected to a type of um, computer room that is on the upstairs that people are monitoring. And I'm like asking myself, man, why did they have me here? What, what seems to be the problem? And then in the middle of this um, this place where all these boxes are, there's a there's a center core. There's a center core. It, it's made with liquid, but it's um, really like a shiny type of liquid. Uh, it looked like mercury. It was like a bluish color. So you could see it moving up and down like if it was, um, you know, those lights that you see when you go north in the skies, what do you call those lights? Um, the aurora borealis? It, it looks like an aurora borealis inside this tube. And it's quite interesting. I thought it was like a lighting for the room and all that. It, it looked kind of cool. But it's actually a, a energy source for, for these for, that connects to the each boxes that each people are at. Some boxes, you can hear people screaming. Um, like not in pain, but like these boxes, they they put you in this trance, they put you in this deep sleep, and then when you when you sleep in this deep trance in this box, is um, actually monitoring your past lives, so is is monitoring all the lives you have lived. I don't know how people are going to take this, but we we have lived multiple lives. In, in the past and sometimes we come back and sometimes with this technology that they have they can see the past through this device that's connected to this recliner type of chair that's connected to your brain because the brain patterns they can see it through a screen that is on top of that floor i was telling you about that they do monitoring on and everybody was going through this trance in the same time and i remember Close my eyes, and I remember being on a planet. This planet was beautiful. It had valleys, it had the grass, and it moved in synchronicity. And I remember seeing in the distance, I saw a city coming out from the ocean, from, from this planet's ocean. And it looked like it was built under the ocean up, because you, could, you can only see the part that is on top of the ocean. And I remember me calling you, telling you about this situation about this um, dream that I had. It was a dream that was activated by this recliner type of chair that they put you in. They try to extract not information, but bits and pieces of what you have done in the past. And it's possible um, to have this because your blood is really, really um, information. Your brain is also information. Um, by extracting your blood, they can tell a lot of your past ancestors in your past lives. By quantum computing, and they have technology that will overwhelm you. So in this like trance I was in, this dream state, I remember seeing somebody that you know. I remember calling you and telling you about this. I saw her wearing white i saw her looking at me and i felt that she was part of this world and that she was telling me hey come over here let's go we need to talk something serious is happening and i remember going to her but i don't remember seeing my body i tried to look at my hands but i couldn't look at my hands i tried to look at my legs but i couldn't see my legs but she was calling me towards her and this planet was beautiful 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 and i called you and i told you about this um dream and i felt like a peace telling you this and they gave me the green light to tell you because really really sometimes they don't want to talk about the technology that we have because the technology that we have is is really advanced. There's a lot of ET races that uses the same technology. And it connects. It's like a web that connects to each other. 
And this technology, there's other ET races that uses it, and they connect with each other. So there's other ET people that come to that particular building and they get into these boxes, and that's how they communicate to the world or their past lives. Because for most ETs, everything that's happening is happening at once. Different time, different ages. I don't know how you're going to take this, but everything is happening in one time or probably in different dimensions everything is happening at one time like for some of these advanced ets time does not exist time is a construct so what do you think about that doc all right well just to kind of recapitulate that because that was quite a lot of information there so after the mission that you did where you went to this underground base and saw all these ET craft and personnel walking around somewhere in the Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee region. You went back to the, that military base that you took me to when I visited with my wife back in March, I thought uh, I recall, and you took me to that base. So I know the base, I've been there. And so you went back to the base and after you cleaned up went through whatever decontamination process, then you went into this room or into this building and you were asked to go through this technology and it involves people being able to access their past life memories. And so this technology enabled you to remember or brought up these memories of a past life in this ancient world and you saw someone that I know. Um, shall we mention her name? Yes, is I'll give it to you. Okay, all right. Uh, JP says that he saw Elena Danan on this world, this ancient world with the beautiful city that is partially submerged and something to do with the tides it coming in and out but um, that he saw this city and he saw her in this past life memory and and this all this all happened after the mission you're you're at the base after the mission i didn't have the green light to tell you that part but i was not begging but i was kept nagging about it because it was quite interesting and it connects to a lot of things that we go through um, in this community, secret, synchronicity, synchronicity, you know, um, it was a nice experience. Um, this device that we had was made for a planet that was a, a type of water planet. I thought that it would be one of the planets in our solar system, but it came to be that it was another planet. So I think they were trying to extract why I went to the mission and if I ever been on this planet in this life or any other lives that I lived. So it happened to be that I have been on this planet. See, nobody chooses who goes on these missions. There's somebody higher up that chooses the people. So so let's just be clear here. Uh, When you say who chooses to go on these missions, you're you're talking about the mission that you just did to the spaceport in that kind of Alabama area. Mm -hmm. That, That mission you did was chosen by someone. And I don't even know. You, um, no, no, that, that you were chosen to do that mission, and then afterwards you're you're brought back to the base, and you uh, go in this to the into this technology, and you remember a past life experience, and you remember seeing Elena Danan. So and, and okay, so you you weren't able to tell me the last time we talked, you know, where you reported about the mission, but now you, you you've been given permission to do so. So what what happened when you told Elena? I told Elena, I texted her. I said, hey, I had a dream with you. I I did not tell her um, it was induced by, you know, by the scientists. When I say scientists, there's a lot of civilian people that works on military bases, um, that work for certain companies that are not related to the military. So when I say um, scientists, I'm not really saying military personnel, I'm really saying um, civilians that work for the military. I just want to make that clear for the public. Um, there's a lot of ETs and civilians that work for the military that a lot of people don't comprehend like what they bring and how they help the humanity to keep on going. 
So when I was telling Elena, I did not tell her about it was induced by a certain um, technology. I told her, hey, I had a I had a vision. I had a dream. I had a dream with you. And this dream, I saw you dressed in white. And and she, and, and she texts me back and she asked me, wait, wait, wait a second. What color hair did I have? And I'm like, hmm. She gave me three options. She gave me blonde. I think she also gave me redhead. And then she gave me brown hair. I said, brown hair. I saw you with brown hair. She's like, oh, my God. She felt like, I don't know if she felt like a, a cold and hot feeling and, and like a wow feeling. But she told me that she was there. That she remembers that planet. And I, this, I was describing the planet. The planet um, has a city that is, is, is coming out from the water. And I told her that this city has a moon that is really dense. And it has a lot of metal that creates a, a, a greater gravitational pull. And, and when it gets close um, to the planet or when it's above the city, because it has a greater gravitational pull than our moon on Earth, it grabs the tide, the tide, the, the tidal wave. It, it makes it bigger, and because of that, this civilization that lives on this planet has a technology and has the type of metal that comes directly from that. They they escape it from that moon and they bring to the planet to build these these um, mega structures of buildings that can withstand the gravitational pull of the tidal waves that is getting pulled by the moon. So I was telling her that, and she was like. Oh my God, I feel like crying. She said that she felt like crying, that I really described the planet that one of her past lives were, was part of, and she's began these downloads and and we connected. And I felt like a like wow. So we are connected. You know, the universe put people in your life to connect. And I remember when we were in Daytona and we were walking on the beach. Um, we were holding our shoes and then she looks up on the ocean and then she just lifts up her her hand and points to the direction where the arc was and i'm like wow she she knows the she knows the exact direction and i i, I think i remember showing you on the map look she pointed this way and look it goes straight straight to the to the arc she has a connection she has a connection and and I know a lot, a lot more people do have a connection. And, and this is going to happen more and more. There's going to be a lot of people connecting with each other. Oh, I remember this. Oh, I remember that. And once this technology will be available for the public, that will come with the healing technologies that will come as well. The type of healing that when you lay down and it heals you and will reverse some organs on your body that will make you live a little bit longer to probably 150, 130 years old, or even longer, depending on your past history of what other family members have in your life and all that. So everything is coming into play. These ships coming in from different solar systems or coming from the vicinity from Jupiter and dropping these UAP, these UFOs, these um, drones. Like, it's, it's stunning all, all of this. And I, and I think that's bringing, that's bringing people together as well with these experience. And we're getting to see that on the news. We're getting to see this everywhere that we're looking at. Pe more people are talking about these experience and all this that's happening to us. And the actual politics of this, the, the, the politics of this is really important because we just got a new king. In Europe. Well, before we talk about King Charles and the coronation, I just wanted to back up a little bit. Now, I find it very interesting that you had that memory brought up by this technology that someone within the programs wanted you to go through this technology. They, they wanted to learn out more about your past memories. And I find it very curious that of all the memories of all the past lives that they could have uh, brought up. They brought up one where you recall seeing a brown-haired female by this futuristic city, 
and and you got the hit that this was Elena Danan and and she later confirmed that that she had a similar past life memory. So I find it very curious that that was something that was uh, brought up, that particular memory set. So it was like someone wanted to learn about your past and your connection with Elena Danan. And I thought I find that very interesting. Uh, we went to this port, right? And we were given this technology to take with us. Me, personally, I don't know who gave it to us. I remember from a distance seeing a Nordic type, but we did not get close enough to connect to that particular ET or person. I remember seeing from a distance this ET giving this device to us, to one of the guys. They brought it back. We wrapped it up. They gave us the directions. Hey, um, not as much vibration. This device cannot vibrate a lot. So we have this box that you put in stuff. And with gimbals, this box stays the way it is. So we put that device inside this box. And the, the, car, the car can drive sideways or it can drive, um, uh, it can do turns, but it stays, this device stays stationary because of this particular box. It's the technology that we have that some missiles that we carry also goes on these particular boxes that keep the missile stationary and then any vibrations does not affect the missile and anytime it moves it stays the way it is um we also put different devices on, uh, on these particular boxes um i can't tell you um, who makes these tip boxes or which technology it comes from but i know we have them. and we brought this back to the base i took the box and i gave it to one of the scientists that we came back to. And with that, I felt not connected, but I felt my hairs go up when I touched this device. I felt like a connection. And I told that, you know, um, you really have to tell um, the scientists or the people that we give the device to what you feel or if you have a connection or what's going on when you give the devices back. So when I said that, that's when they, not just me, everybody else, they took us to this other place where, where I'm telling you about the, the rooms and all that. So, so this was that healing device that you got from that underground base or your team was handed that healing device to be taken off world. But you, you, when you handled it, it did something to you. Yes. And, you know, you're being, you have to be honest, you know, you have to tell them, hey, I felt this and feel this and because everything goes through a cleansing, you know, everything goes through a, a type of cleansing. Um, decontamination. How do you say decontamination? Decontamination. Decontamination. <laughs> and there's three more devices. So we have one. There's two more devices. Of so these. when you say three more devices, I mean, you, are, you are only given one device from well, that people we, in the underground base so we where have does the other two come from we have one device the other two are somewhere on this planet do not know where and these devices are are really powerful you could use them in the right way or in the wrong way okay so this device you brought back is is connected to two other devices around the planet that haven't been found or someone is in control of them and they're all very powerful. Okay. Well, we, we do know the location of one device. We have control of that device and we gave it, and it's already off planet. It's already um, heading towards the other planet or already there. But there's another one that is inside uh, inner earth civilization. They have it. One of the king, they're, they're in control of it. And then there's another device that we're thinking is around Europe somewhere around Europe. Okay, all right. So all of those devices are there, um, you know, in different locations, but the one you brought back to the base, you handled it, it triggered you, um, then you go up into this room, you call it a, a, a box, and you have this vision, this memory of being on this planet, uh, so, yeah, I was just very curious as to, you know, why it was you brought up that 
why it was that you actually had a vision of this place and Elena Danan is involved in that. So it was like, well, does someone does someone want to know about your, one of your past lives and your connection with her or was this just accidental? It's not accidental. They're actually hearing this conversation right now. They know that I interacted with you. I interacted with other people, with um, Alex, with um, Lena, with John Charles, with Tony, with a lot of people that we connected to and been doing major monitoring and protection for everybody. They know that we're all connected some way, some, somehow, some, something is connecting us together. With you also, um, they're monitoring everything that we do. It's it's how it is. Um, we can't get away from that. Okay, so it's it's kind of like so so you're working. You know, I mean, you're 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 part of these covert programs. You're 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 you know you're currently um, active army, and and so they're they're wanting to know about your past lives, and they're wanting to know about past life connections with others that are associated with the kind of information you're releasing. So it sounds like they're doing intelligence gathering operation to find out about how we, uh, the, you know, the people you just mentioned, are all connected through these past life uh, associations, mm -hmm. which, you know, which makes a lot of sense to me because it's like, yeah, I know that there are connections and, you know, I haven't explored them because it's, you know, it's not so relevant to me at this point but obviously it's relevant to those that are monitoring you and those that are green lighting you to sh share this information with me and then me making it public because uh, as you remember also um the experience that elena had um what in this mountain that she met this um this officer uh general glenn van hoof the four star well actually she didn't meet him it was she saw her um, Nordic contact or her Galactic Federation contact meeting Thorhand. So it was Thorhand who met with General Glenn Van Herk, but she saw it through his eyes. Okay. Okay. So um, they're monitoring her as well as they're monitoring everybody else on these situations because now, as you can see, you know, um, all these investigations on UAPs, on, on, on UFOs, on um, different scientists are coming out saying, hey, you know, we have a uh, mothership coming our way. And it's getting more interesting, Doc. It's getting more interesting and people are going to realize that all these all these um, experiences that we're having, you know, it, it's going to come out that, hey, you know, we have these motherships coming, but these people going through these experiences, they're really going through these experiences. And there's other people that are, there's people that are red-lighted to not say nothing about it because maybe their experience is um, affecting somebody that's connected to them. Yeah, so we were in this room that I had that extraction. And when I got out, they took, they, 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 they dim down the light, they, they take you out. And I asked, I asked, the science, I asked one of the scientists, I said, hey, uh, what did you guys just do? I had a, a vision, I had a dream. This really made me have a dream that that I felt that I was there. I said, yeah, no, we're just checking, checking you out. Don't worry about it. We're just making sure everything is it's connected and we'll be monitoring that. And we're probably gonna call you again to do this um experiment. So so I just wanted to kind of clarify something. So those technicians or scientists that are monitoring you while you're having that experience and remembering this are they seeing it as well i mean does the technology enable them to see it or, or do they have to do a debriefing with you because it sounds as though they somehow are recording it they're, they're they're recording it they know they have a they have a screen that shows everything like in black and white or like uh inverted colors and the machine inverts the colors back and everything that you see through this monitoring, they can see as well. Interesting. Oh, wow. So so they're like taking, they're recording your past life events, but the, the but they're, cho they're specifically choosing events where you're interacting with people that are part of this kind of circle that is, 
that is being formed. And of course, Elena Danan is one, but you know, the next time they could do it with, say, someone else from that circle, like Jean Charles. Yeah, so, with you, so. with, um, Tony, with somebody. And um, everything is done with frequencies too, you know. Um, they can connect with anybody with frequency, with mm -hmm. vibration. It's very interesting because um, I know, uh, you know, people have talked about star seeds incarnating on Earth, and you know, we're here to fulfill uh, missions. But what hasn't been talked about so far is star groups coming here. In other words, people who are linked in some way in some other world, you know, that they. Uh, ETs on another world, and they decide, oh, we're going to go go to Earth, and as a group, we're going to do this particular mission. And it, it sounds as though the people that are in charge of you as you do these covert missions, that they are now interested in gathering intel on this star group that and you're there, linked into. And there's particular people that left the star group that will come back and be part of the star group and connect again. and. Let me tell you that um, it's, it's it's scary. It's scary sometimes for for us to be a part of this magnificent thing. You know, to give this information out is hard when you get these downloads. You know, and there's some people that are part of these groups and they get interrogated. They get you, you better not say no information, or we're gonna get rid of you, and we're gonna get rid of your family. And we're going to raid your house. And I'm talking about the black hats. And they really scare these people that made it far on giving information. And they really got into their heads. And they feel like they're not protected no more. And then those particular people feel like they're getting shot from everywhere. And then they disclude themselves from everybody else. You know, uh, it's sad when that happens, you know. Um, but the, these people are getting attacked. Um, in a spiritual and real way to 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 turn it around for them, you know, and it's tough, you know, but when when there's a group, we're strong together, you know. And when we give information and there's synchronicity, synchronicity, it's it's kind of awesome because people are going to realize that, you know, we're we're connected and we're we're telling the how it is yeah it is it is very interesting it, um, it's kind of like i've never heard of this before you know that technology exists to kind of track uh, past lives not only of one person but of others that they're associated with and that you know, they're able to kind of like trigger those recollections that's kind of like um, very revealing and also alarming as well that they they could kind of like track us all in terms of our past life connections to one another. No, well, this this type of technology has been out for ages, um, Doc. Like when we enter to the arcs, the arcs know who you are, and because you enter the arc, it activates certain things. Why it activates? Because it it, it remembers it remembers your DNA. It remembers who you are, who you was, when you're interacted with the arcs. You know. Um, this technology has been out for a long time. Well, uh, yeah, well, that leads to another question. I mean, uh, you've been on the arcs, you know, quite a few times, both before you joined the military and after you joined the military, you've been on arcs. Um, so I'm sure at some point that they've worked out that, you know, you are associated with one of the arcs mm -hmm. um, and that it's very likely that the people that you are working with or collaborating with are also associated with the arcs. So mm -hmm. it's like it's like those so them using this technology on you, they're they're trying to find out who who are the crew of the arcs. Yeah, exactly. Who are the crews of the arcs and how can they get everybody together to probably go at once to these arcs to see what happens? What happens when everybody comes at once in the arc? Well when everything is activated at once. Um, because there's certain spots when you go into the arc that only I can activate, but there's certain stop like spots in the arcs that I can't activate. There's other people that activate. It. So how can I put this? When people dream, sometimes when you dream, sometimes it's your past lives. 
that you you have is a, is a construct of what you lived before, but it puts what you're living in the modern time with it. So sometimes you feel like it's weird. Oh man, it's a weird dream. But it's probably a past life that you have lived. Interesting. Wow. I mean, that is that is very interesting that uh, they are using this technology to track down the crews of the space arcs. Now, of course, I mean, the White Hats or the Earth Alliance, they're probably wanting to help these crews reconnect and and we're very interested to see what happens with the arcs. But, you know, obviously that's information that could be used by the other side for the opposite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, purpose. exactly. So it's, it's, it's very curious that this is being, that this is happening. Yeah, and what, what do you think about the king being king now, huh? Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. Um, uh, I uh, think that it's it's a significant development. Uh, I, I know you talked about King Charles in relation to the seeds that were taken from that tree of life you know, in that underground ant civilization, that they were taken to England by the orders of the king or the new king, and then, and then they were taken to Nippur, to the city where this uh, ancient Anunnaki god king, um, Aruna, is in hibernation. And we, we never followed up what happened to the seeds after that, but, but somehow the, the king, King Charles, is involved in all of that. So, yeah, what, what does it mean now with the coronation? More power. Um, long live the king. Doc, <laughs> we can't, we can't, I can't say nothing else about that. Um, maybe you can, maybe you can elaborate, but long live the king. Well, I know there was a remote viewing, uh, done of uh, the coronation by the crypto viewing. These are, this is the same group of people that did the remote viewing of, of you going into the space arc in the Atlantic ocean, but they did a remote viewing just now that's just come out of the coronation. And and they said quite clearly that actually there were two ceremonies. You know, one is the, the public ceremony that everyone sees all, with all the pomp, all the splendor, you know, it all looks grand and great. But there's also a second ceremony, which is more of an occult uh, secret ceremony, which involves blood sacrifice. And we don't want to go <laughs> into the details of what, what happens in that second ceremony, but that's where the real power is handed handed off. That King Charles, not just him being uh, uh, um, coronated as the head of the British Empire uh, of well, the, the, of the British Isles, but he becomes the king of this of this occult network, which is centered in London, the British royal family. And so he, he, he reaches a, he's given power as a very senior figure in the occult. Now, I don't know what relationship that has with the Pindar, because apparently the Pindar um, is, is connected to the Draco reptilians and uh, the, the Pindar was, was taken off planet. But with the British royal family, because that's a kind of human lineage, uh, maybe he is like the new occult leader of the planet you know with in the absence of the pindar maybe the king you know in this kind of secret occult ceremony where he goes through the process it, it is now like the the new occult leader you know i'm just speculating there but you know to me there's something very significant now, now, about him being now that, that new queen right um camilla camilla Bal balls I, I don't really know her past history but um well, long live the king. I can't. All right. All right. Well, I don't um, know so... All what Alex said one day, but, you know, long live the king. <laughs> okay. Well, let's finish up there. So I want to thank you, JP, for uh, agreeing to do this update. No problem. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. And let it be blessed, everything that we do. And share love to everybody. You have been listening to Exopolitics Today with Dr. Michael Sala. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Join or start a conversation in the comments. Take the time to explore the vast library of best-selling books 
webinars, and podcasts by Dr. Sala. Visit exopoliticstoday.com.